All right, everybody. Well, I'm super excited to give you a first-hand look and my personal review of the brand new Hoyt Carbon Defiant. These things are in high demand right now, and they're just now trickling out of the factory. And I'm gonna tell you right now, if you've got one on order, they're worth the wait. And if you've got one in your local store, you better go shoot one for yourself. First thing I noticed right away when it comes to my personal opinion is just how well it felt. One, the wall at full draw is better than any Hoyt wall that I felt in the past, which is saying a lot. And it is the quietest bow I've ever shot. And I can tell you that it feels so good in your hand when you shoot it. So I'm gonna talk about several of the features that I like about this year's model. But I guess first, what I wanna say is this year Hoyt did a great job of bringing out several videos that go in very, very specific detail about their innovations and the engineering behind that. So I would urge you to check those out at Hoyt.com because they're great videos. So the first thing about this bow that is gonna be important for me to talk about is the new DFX cam. This is an awesome cam system and there's three pretty cool features about this cam. First off, this cam has been designed and the axle position has been put in a place on this cam so that when it's paired with this ultra flex limb, that when you come to full draw, the string stays at a high point on the cam. So that way, when your bow comes to full draw, you're not having to deal with a super sharp string angle if you choose a shorter axle to axle bow. And this is gonna be important. I'm six foot five, so I'm a big guy, and normally I stay with the longer axle to axle length models because I wanna be able to keep my head in a, in a vertical position at full draw, and I also don't like having that peep sight too far away from my eye, which I know takes away from your accuracy. Now, what I'm gonna tell you is, I actually had a 31 inch carbon defiant and I took that bow and I drew it back on a draw board and drew it to 30 inches of draw because that's the longest it can go. Then I took my last year's Nitrum and I set that bow at 30 inches of draw and it was a Nitrum 34. And I traced both of the string angles. And what you can see here and what you probably can't see here is that there's actually two different colors of lines. There's a red and a black. The black line is the new 31 inch carbon defiant. The red line was a 34 inch nitrum, both drawn to the exact same draw length. So what that does is that allows someone, even with my size and stature, to even be able to shoot or shorter axle to axle length models. The other thing too is, if you're looking for a turbo speed, the turbo model is shooting at 350 feet per second. Now in the past, I personally didn't consider that model because with that shorter brace height and my long draw, the string angle got very steep and it got severe for me. However, now with this new DFX cam, I'm gonna be able to utilize a better string angle even with a shorter brace height. So this is a cool cam system and something that you're gonna really appreciate once you get to full draw. Now the next thing is they have a modular system on their cam now to where you're not actually replacing individual modules. This system goes from an A position to an E position. So you have a full range of your draw length adjustment without having to actually replace the module. This is gonna be important. They still have three cam sizes. So they have a one, two, and a three cam. And within those cams, you're gonna have the adjustability of several inches of draw length. The next thing is this year, you have a draw stop on the top, as well as your draw stop on the bottom, which is gonna give you a super hard wall. But to go one step further, they now have a third stop that comes around and contacts the limb, which gives an absolutely rock hard wall. So for any of you out there who really like the draw wall of a Hoyt, they're better right now. And I can tell you that what you wanna do is you actually wanna draw this bow back after you have your bow synchronized. You wanna draw it back and move this last 
peg into the position of your limb while you're at full draw and do that safely using a draw board or a hooter shooter. Um, the next thing is going to be the new Ultraflex limbs. This is an awesome limb design that goes way beyond parallel and because of that they help eliminate vibration because of the direction the limb travels and it also helps pair this new DFX cam in exactly the features I talked about a little bit earlier. Now what I will say is with this new Ultraflex limb it's going to be important that you only press it in certified uh, bow presses and on your bow you should have a little wrap like this that tells you exactly the bow presses or where to go to see the bow presses that Hoyt has approved. You can go to Hoyt.com forward slash safety and warnings and you can find out what bow presses they have approved for this. The other thing you'll find with these Ultraflex limbs is they're actually going right into an all new limb pocket system and if any of you out there are Hoyt fans you know that Hoyt's been known for years for their limb pocket system and having zero tolerance between the limb and that pocket. This new design is super slim down and it gives you those same exact features but it also went one step further by putting shock rods directly under the bottom side of the limb. So any residual vibration that's going from the strings and cams down into that carbon riser towards your hand, those shock rods are going to help deaden that instantly. So one question I get asked a lot as well is, is the carbon worth it? And I can tell you that last year I shot an aluminum riser for the first time in a long time. I loved my nitrum. However, if any of you followed me, you found out that once December came and my late season hunts came, I ended up wanting to go back to my carbon because I can tell you right now, a day like today, 20 degrees out, grabbing a cold aluminum riser versus grabbing a Hoyt carbon riser, there's a huge difference in the comfort alone makes it worth it. Um, I'm just going to give you a quick rundown here of what accessories I have on my personal bow because a lot of you ask that. Um, this is exactly how my bow is set up, 30 and a half inches, um, 60 pounds. I'm going to shoot uh, a trophy taker, knockdown pro rest, fuse playback stabilizer. I've got a fuse quiver. I'm shooting the new Easton FMJ six millimeter with a four fletch. Uh, Pro Max AAE vein, Nocturnal Knox, and a 100 grain rage. Um, I actually took an older Sherlock off one of my older bows quick because I knew the pin gaps would work for this speed. But uh, I'm going to try to get this thing out in the field. So before I go on too long, let's step over where I can show you some real numbers on how my bow performs. All right, everyone, well, I'm going to give you some real numbers here. Um, I'm shooting 30.5 inches of draw length, and I'm shooting 60 pounds exactly. So this won't be a true IBO speed rating like what you're going to see advertised because I'm 10 pounds light, but I'm also just a fuzz long on the draw length. However, keep in mind this bow is totally set up with Knox loops, peep, and everything. So I'm pretty sure that half inch of speed that I'll gain from my draw length is going to easily balance out because I've got this stuff tied in the string. So I'm just going to zero this out and go ahead and show you. Fifty nine point six pounds. So I'm actually just a little bit light on poundage. Um, I have a 300 grain arrow. Uh, this is an arrow that I use for testing, so should be right at five grains per pound, 60 pounds. And there we go. You can see 313 feet per second. Again, that's 60 pounds with Knox loops everything, and as you could hear, uh, 
deadly quiet, even at five grains per pound. So looking forward to getting this thing out. It's getting ready to break daylight, so I'm gonna go jump in a tree stand and see if I can make something happen with this new Carbon Defiant 34. Spurs just bred that doe, and now he's turned. He went off on his own. He's going right up this creek system. My wind's really good, so I'm gonna try to hit the horns together. It's after lunch. There's just no way, no way. Here's my horns, squeezing them as tight as I could between my legs. That buck came running in. First day with the new 34 Carbon Defiant, and right here is what happened. I wish I could tell all of you out there, if you give it a try, you're gonna have luck like this, but awesome. Huge buck I called Spurs, 14 points. What more could you ask for? I can tell you right now, quietest Hoyt I've ever shot. Great speeds, love the feel, love how it shoots. You gotta try it right there. New Carbon Defiant, it is an awesome, awesome setup. Oh man.